Liberia, we discuss everything Liberia, from education to politics, arts and culture, entertainment, agriculture, history, religion, family, and technology. Focus on Liberia uncovers and showcases the best of Liberia and shows the world the truth about Liberia. We educate, elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We conduct interviews, panel discussions, debates, and more. Tune in to Focus on Liberia on Facebook and YouTube and be a part of the stories that make up the news. This is Focus on Liberia, and I am Dennis Jack. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Between the Headlines on Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Jack, and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. Quite recently, last week, we all panicked because the internet went down in Liberia and other parts of Africa. That was a scary situation. So we started wondering, is this cyber attack? Did something break? What happened? Well, it took us a day. We couldn't hear from family members. We couldn't see postings. Focus on liberal reporters couldn't report anything because the internet was down. Well, by 5 p.m., internet services were restored. But what actually happened? What happened? Why did it happen? What was fixed? How was this resolved? There were countries impacted, other countries were not. For example, Sierra Leone, the internet did not go out. What happened? Why? And we want to also understand how, what can we do so that this does not happen again? Especially for Liberia, what do we do? We've heard roll, roll, roll. And I've been screaming, internet, internet, internet. Electricity, electricity, electricity. Tonight, I've brought two persons who know a little bit more than many of us when it comes to internet. Our own Jimmy Eastman is a technology or telecommunication guru. Jimmy, welcome to the show. Hey, glad to be here, Dennis. Looking forward to it. Uh, uh, Dr. Lionel Robbins, uh, I don't know why I always say Robbins. Dr. Lionel Bernard was here before he was talking about internet. And he told us things, I think, Lionel, was it like three years ago? Yep, so? About two or three years ago, Dennis. He's right. And we were talking internet and almost things that he spoke about. When this happened, I remember him because this is what he does for a living. Doc, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks for having me. We want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. Internet is very important. Maybe we thought that uh, this was play, play, but when the internet went down, we couldn't do anything. Think about banking. 
think about posting your family pictures, think about other functions. So it means when there is no internet, a lot of things will stop happening. So we want to know what happened. L let's start with discussing internet first. How important is internet? Okay. Dr. Dr. Bernard. Well, I mean, it's right now, you know, social media um, is the primary way most of us interact with the internet as well as through a browser. So I would say it's internet is critical in terms of a social medium. It's how we, you know, communicate with friends, relatives by social media. It's how we keep up with news and information through Instagram and other social media platforms. It also is also how we do research. I mean, if you want to find out something, you Google it or you go to some other search engine to find out what it is. So it's a it's a it's a vital educational and research research resource for, for all mankind. Uh, other importance include economic importance. Um, it is the primary method for purchasing and, and all commercial business activities, uh, period. If you want to buy something, you buy it from Amazon. You know, if you want to order food, you order it to your, your phone, which is connected to the, the communications medium medium of the internet. So it is a it's become a critical resource for, for sustaining our lives and for sustaining our livelihood as well as sustaining our relationship to one another. Thank you, Jimmy. So what happened when internet goes down? Well, you know, it's it, I think it's a good idea to to give uh, uh, understanding how the how we got to this place. Okay. In the early two two thousands, when that is when the internet started to come alive, really to change the entire world. Okay, where that is when we started, uh, pe people started looking for things online and never got never could see before. They started putting banking systems online for, where people can order and people can use bank transactions. The whole world started changing. But Africa, unfortunately, we weren't that connected to the, to the internet because largely we didn't have the, the inf existing infrastructure. You know, before we used to use copper wire, okay? You told me to break it down. We used to use copper wire to connect people with a telephone or with a fax machine. But when they started carrying more and more information on it, copper were not able to do it. We had to use a new medium. And that medium is called fiber, fiber optics, that by modulating the light that goes through a small little pipe, the, the pipe is as small as a one strand of hair, by modulating the, the light that passes through there, we can send the same information at that kind of speed. So we were able now to watch TV, to watch movies, to do anything online in, in one second, in one minute. Long so so, so that, that we're modulating it, meaning yeah. we're kind of adjusting it to fit in that small hole, <laughs> right? Well, you know, sound, light travels in waves, right? up and down, sign, sign of soldier waves. It travels in waves. So we can make it go faster, or we can make the, the amplitudes big, make them big waves. By changing these things, we call that what we call modulating. Okay. By changing how the, the, the wave patterns are. So by changing the wave pattern, we can put more information right. and it gets some complex more, uh, like, uh, like orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. That's a very complicated, uh, a complicated way of modulating a wave. And by doing so, we can put more and more information on a, on a, a beam of light so it, that is why right now we can watch movies everything on the internet but before 2000s you couldn't we didn't have that it, it was very very slow people remember yeah. that it was slow you had to uh, 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 wait until you could even see one little clip so it's not like that now back to africa unfortunately africa didn't have telephone systems like europe in Japan, we were, we, how many times? And we used to go to remember we used to go to telecom before we make a call. Yeah, you couldn't make a call from your house, or you couldn't make a call from uh, uh, Grand Gita or all those places. We couldn't before, and we start. So we didn't have the connection. The wires were not in the ground. 
So that is that is what happened while we are a bit slower than everybody else. But right now, instead of even using our wire, we're going to do something called leapfrog. We're going to go straight to fiber optics and use wireless technology like cell phone, like Wi-Fi, and other maybe microwave and satellite. That way we can connect everybody without putting that much wire in the ground. But just to do that, it costs 15000 to 30000 just for one kilometer of fiber. Hmm. Yeah. And we're going to need to bring Africa to where it needs. It's going to be at least $100 million going to be required. Okay. And that will bring about, we'll have to build about 250 uh, uh, 4G stations, 250000 that way, you know where the, the tower, we need about 250,000 of those, and we need to put out at least 250,000 kilometers of fiber optics before we bring Africa to where it is. So what yeah. happened the other day? Yeah, and, and, that's, we, and, that's, the, and that's what we're coming to now, because yeah. the other day, something happened, and we didn't have internet. And then when they yeah. broke, they say, hey, other countries like Benin, Liberia, Ghana, Burkina Faso, Togo, Cameroon, Gabon, Namibia, Niger, Nigeria, Lesotho, South Africa. There was no internet and you could see the severity level. Right. So that's why I want for us to go now. What happened on Thursday? So that fiber optics I'm telling you about, remember now it's a piece of, it's a glass. Yeah. And you can put several glasses together, maybe about 12, 24, 144, they got away, and then put it in a, in a cable with uh, strength members and all of that. And they take that cable and they put it in the, in the ground. But for Africa to connect to Europe, they had to use the water. So they put the cable in the water. And it goes all the way, starting from South Africa, it comes all the way around past Namibia, past Cameroon, past Nigeria, goes to Africa, uh, Ghana, then Ivory Coast before it comes to Liberia. That cable got cut. Yes, that cable that cut. Now there's four main cables, four main cables. And, and the four main one is Ace. Only Ace goes to Liberia. We'll come, we'll come to the, the, the four main one. I, I still want us because I can I can begin to think about it, how this cable passing through the water. Yes. Right? And where is it coming from? Where is it going? The way they put that cable in the water, a ship, they get a couple of ships, specialized uh, uh, um, companies do this. They take the cable and they they put weight on it to carry it so it can go down to on, this, on the uh, ocean floor. And, and it be joining it piece by piece. And each piece goes down on the ocean floor, goes down on the ocean floor until they can cover that whole distance all the way around. So they join it, join piece, 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 then they put all of it down on the ocean floor. Now, when they're on the ocean floor, it, it kind of safe, but sometimes the ship, a ship anchor can haul it from there or something mm -hmm. can happen on the ocean, in the ocean floor that can cause it to damage. But all of them right now, they're laying down on the ocean floor. Hmm. That's how we that's how we managed to connect to the rest of the world. Liner, this is yes, this yes. is blowing my mind. Maybe <laughs> explain a little more. Right. I mean, it's who 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 is paying for that and whose project is that? Right? Well, like, like Jen, like Dennis said, I'm sorry, like Jimmy said, um, Prior to say 2010, uh, most of Liberia's international calling data, all of the two, the three, main, three or four main carriers in Liberia, Lone Star, Orange. At the time, it was uh, they were called something else. But all of them used satellite connectivity to to um, to communicate internationally. So in 2010, we had a fiber optic cable come from under the ocean into Liberia, called uh, ACE. It stands for Africa, uh, African coast to Europe, I believe, mm -hmm. ACE. 
Um, and that uh, the way it works, Dennis, is, is kind of what, what Jimmy described is that right now, 99% of all international traffic travels under, under, under these, on these cables that are buried under the ocean floor. So uh, it's much cheaper than satellite uh, communication. As you'll notice in 20, prior to 2010 in Liberia, um, if you wanted to get top of your data or, or use uh, your phone, the car, it was pretty expensive uh, to the tone of some, you know, uh, 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 several dollars a minute. Because of the fiber cable, that cost is going down. So it's now much cheaper to do voice and data communications in, in Liberia as well as other parts of Africa. Since this is fiber optic cable, you can carry much more traffic than satellite communications. It's also not, uh, it doesn't get disrupted whenever there is a storm or there's weather uh, weather conditions that are unfavorable. So the way it works is, is very simple. The the fiber cable, you know, they, they drop it on, on the starting point. In the case of the one single cable that comes into Liberia, which is the, uh, the ACE cable, it was dropped in, in Portugal. I forgot the city name. I think it's Lisbon, somewhere outside of yeah. Lisbon. And it was, you know, the ship uh, ran into the ocean, and it's about 10,000 miles long. It runs all the way from Portugal along the coast to Senegal. It drops in Cambia. It drops in Cabon. It drops in Serulum. It drops in Guinea. It drops in Liberia. Nigeria, et cetera, all the way down to South Africa. So this is a very, very long cable. And um, the cable itself is just sitting at the bottom of the ocean. It's about, uh, let's say, about the size of, of, a, of a soccer ball or a football. Mm -hmm. And in the very center of this cable are fiber or glass strands called fiber optics. There are about 100 of them that cover one inch wide. And wrapped around... This uh, this cable bundle is actually petroleum jelly, so they use a uh, grease to, to wrap the cable in. They also wrap it in copper. They wrap it in uh, in steel in steel bars. So they wrap it in plastic as well. So it's got it's got layers and layers of, of uh, protection while it's sitting on the floor. A shark can come and bite it, and it'll probably break its teeth off because it's so strong. Um, so these cables are run, you know, throughout. And those the the you know the reason why they're effective is because they carry a lot of traffic. In fact, they can carry all of the world's communication on one single cable. But because of um, you know ownership and need for redundancy, you've got multiple cables um, mm -hmm. that are floating around the world. There are over a hundred of them all over the world connecting various countries. The reason why these cables are not run over land is because if you run them over land, you got to bury them under the ground, and it's very expensive. And it's it's subject to this even more disruption. Under the under the sea, there aren't any um, disruptions beside uh, sea sea life. But what happened in Liberia started um, at around midnight on March 13th. And before you Sorry, get to that, so so this cable that was dropped in Portugal, wh where is it coming from? So so there is a big house or there is a house that they built where this internet is being generated from. Okay, so. You get the three things you need for the for the communication to work. Okay. You need what is called a medium, which is the fiber. Right. Now, air is another medium. Copper is a medium, but this medium we're using we call it fiber. It's a right. piece of glass, and we're sending light through that glass. The next thing you need, you need something to to generate the signal. Right. And that signal and, and it is usually done on a system like this it's called a, a, a add and drop multiplexer so they put a big multiplexer that can that pick up all the information from from europe and send it and, and send a signal in the in the fiber optics and then it goes all the way around then it, it comes back down to africa now mm -hmm. when it reached africa now they put another multiplexer down, another add and drop multiplexer mm. to each place they want to connect. And that means now they can receive those signals from Europe or from wherever they're bringing it and they can exactly. share it with people on the land now. And so, that multiplexer, uh, we don't understand it, we just call it machine. So that is, that is, uh, to, to kind of expand on what Jimmy said, I'll put this in layman's terms. 
had one end of, the, of this cable is something the multiplexer could be seen as a flashlight, all right? That's being turned off and on. So if you turn it on, that's uh, that's one. If you turn it off, that's zero. If you turn it on for two seconds, that's uh, zero, one, zero. So the sequence of flashing this light across this glass, remember light travels at what? Or 200,000 miles per second. So it's extremely fast. So that's why light is so effective. So they're flashing a light at one of, end of this cable and remember, it's traveling through the, the glass within this cable within a fraction of a second to the other end. And that's how information is transmitted over the Internet, by flashing these light signals, kind of like Morse code in different sequence. And you, you have devices that are at different spots along this cable that will take the incoming light and translate it into zeros, ones, A, B, C, D, E, F, or even images. It all happens extremely fast. You don't really um, see, see it from that perspective. But that's exactly what's going on is that you have light signals that are traveling that are created by these machines. First, the machines capture whatever input is being uh, put into it by those who own the machines as far as information. And the machine converses into light and flashes that light along that, ga that glass tube under the ocean. And that's how we're able to you know, use Facebook, send email. Um, mm -hmm. surf the internet, all from using this light signal. Other mediums, like Jimmy said, use uh, electronic signals. Uh, we say a little bit slower because the you know, electricity travels a little fat, slower. The electrons travel a little slower than light. So mm -hmm. that's why fiber optic cables are so effective because they're extremely fast and extremely reliable and it can carry a lot of information, just through flashing so, lights. So so these cables, I know from the one we are uh, referencing now from Portugal to Liberia, are these same cables running in Europe, America, Brazil? Are they yes. the same? Okay. Yes. Um, as I said earlier, 99% um, of all internet traffic is being moved through these undersea cables. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if you had a highway that's on the ocean. So whenever you do anything on the internet, you do anything related to, to communications um, it, that are, that's internationally international in scope, it goes through these cables. So these cables are interconnected. So the cable that's running from, say, Portugal to Liberia is connected to another cable that's running from Portugal to, say, um, the, the island of, of England. And then there's another cable that's running from there all the way to New York City. Then there's another cable that's running from there all the way down to South America. There's, there's another. You, you've got a lot of redundancy there where, for example, between, say, uh, uh, England, uh, Westchester, England, and uh, in New York City, there are probably about 20, uh, 15, 20 different cables running up and down. They're all owned by different companies and different enterprises, but they're all interconnected and they're all right. redundant towards each other. So, and by redundant, maybe you have you, three cables. So when one fails, you, that picture, you, mm -hmm. you use the other one. Yeah, if you show that picture right now that I just sent you, you'll see all the cables in the whole world, how they're running. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll take uh, that picture. Will take time. So, so, so now let let's go to let's go. To, so that's how the, the cables are running. They're running all over the world, and one of them got to Liberia, and because they run in the all ocean, over the world. Underground. yeah, yeah, and because they run in the ocean, they can, they can be affected by certain things. One shot can bite it. Sighting things. No, yeah. they the the. the Anim sea animals usually don't bother it. The kind of thing that can bother it, one, a ship anchor. You know the, the, the ship, when it's ready to, to touch, to stop, it can yeah. lower the anchor. And the anchor is heavy, and it goes all the way down to the, to the bottom of the, the, the ocean, and it keeps the ship right there. Sometimes yeah. when they're pulling that, that iron back up, it can grab the cable by accident. And, and break the cable. That is one thing. The other thing that can, can damage the, the, the cable is, is like earthquakes and movement, uh, landslide underneath the sea. It gets some, some, something, you know, some, crush it, something fall on it, mm -hmm. and it get in a way of crushing it. But most of the time, it gets cut by some kind of man made, somebody doing something in the water that, got, that will cause it to get broken whatever that may be. Yeah, Dennis, uh, to expand on that, Jimmy is absolutely right. These cables are very high strength. They're designed to withstand 
a lot of uh, pretty pretty significant weather conditions that are under the sea floor. Uh, but the problem is, as, as Jimmy stated, there are two things that uh, can disrupt, and this is exactly what happened in the case with Liberia. It wasn't man-made, as some may have alluded to um, in the press. It was simply caused by an earthquake that's somewhere between, they're, they're narrowing it down somewhere between Ivory Coast and Sierra Leone area. Um, and it was four cables that were impacted because they all sort of lie side by side along the seafloor. And one thing to realize is that the seafloor is not as stable as land, as land floor, because it's subject to earthquakes. If there's an earthquake, the, there's a possibility that the, the seabed that these cables are lying on become unstable. Uh, if there's a mudslide under the ocean floor, uh, it could cover up or move the the, 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 the fiber cable. There's a lot of there's a lot of things, but it's mainly related to the stability of the seabed and what's going on down there that can disrupt these cables. Now, the these four cables that um that come, you know, that, that were impacted by this, including ACE, as Jimmy mentioned, there was also SAT3. This is another cable that runs side by side right under the ocean floor. There's also a West African cable system that connects Portugal again to Nigeria and, and taps into other countries like Ghana. There's also mean one, which is Nigeria's mean commercial cable, undersea fiber cable that was disrupted as well. So these four cables were disrupted in the direct, in the exact same spot on the ocean floor. And you gotta also remember that these cables are two to three miles under the ocean. That's the equivalent of say uh, Mama Point all the way to Senko, you know, maybe even Oro. That's how deep it is. It's very deep in the ocean. Uh, so it's impossible for someone to go down there and cut it, like people are saying. So if something happens there, it's usually due to uh, seismic or geographic issues. Um, so yeah, so these are that's that's what that was the culprit in the situation. It was an earthquake. Uh, um, Jimmy also mentioned the uh, the anchor impact. Um, just recently, about a month ago, um, there was a terrorist terrorist incident in in the Red Sea where a ship was sunk, a tanker was sunk. And as it was going down, the anchor started dragging along the seafloor. And in that Suez Canal route that runs from Saudi Arabia, Yemen, all the way to Egypt, that tiny little portion of ocean, there are literally probably about 30 or 40 fiber optic cables running there. And that anchor hooked onto one of the cables and started dragging it. As a result, it almost cut the cable because it was so strong. And that disrupted traffic in the Middle East, as well as parts of Asia and East Africa. It's still disrupting it now because they're trying to fix it. Um, so yeah, so those are the two reasons why you have a disruption in the internet uh, due to fiber cable uh, uh, um, disruption. And why are we not paying attention to this? It, it, it looks like it's not our business, right? Until it hits you. Okay, so this is how we connect. We pay, it's just like we lease the, 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 the space on the cable. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And if the, the, if you want more space, you, you buy more space. So we're leasing the space on the cable. We, they don't they belong to us. It doesn't belong. We just to say, look, or, or you can look at it almost like electricity. You say, I want to use X amount of megawatts a, 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 mm -hmm. a month. And, and this one is, is given in terabytes and gigabytes. For, for like, some people, you say, I just want to put my light bulb on. I don't have refrigerator. Yeah, I want plenty. <laughs> so, Liberia, like, go there and they're leasing. I think I do, we only give you getting 10 gigabytes. Where I can tell you, one city in America use maybe a couple of hundred terabytes just to show you the difference of consumption. So, we lease it from there. We tell we would just say we want one 10 gigabytes a month and we'll pay the money. So, we don't own a cable. So anything happened, they have to uh, 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 fix it. The only thing is we sign a contract with them. And by right, if something, if it goes off, then we can, we can, we can call for damages because our businesses can't run, this can't happen. So they're in that contract, they stipulate what will happen if that cable gets cut or if the services are interrupted. So we do care about it but we don't own it we're just sharing it with other people and, and do you do you know how much we pay is that public information for that i mean oh, um, go ahead go ahead Lionel. 
Yeah, the 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 cable that comes into Liberia, the ACE cable, uh, we we signed a contract with back in the Liberian government signed a contract back in twenty, I think it was twenty twenty ten or twenty eight, and the cable actually arrived in Liberia at right behind the barracks in twenty in twenty ten in November of 2020, 2010. So the US gov the Liberian government rather had to pay the 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 ACE consortium as they call it about $24 million to gain access to the capacity, which is about two two gigabits per second of capacity coming into Liberia. So we're paying for that. That that was an upfront cost just to gain access to the cable. And that's the same cost that, that was charged to other countries like Sierra Leone, uh, Gambia, even even Ghana got into the act. So everybody had to pay this fee. But also there's a there's a monthly or annual maintenance fee uh, that has to be paid as well to the tune of about two hundred thousand dollars to help the the cable company maintain that cable and also continue to buy, provide to cover some operational costs related to that cable. It also pays for the landing in Liberia, right there in I think it's right the at, in the, El, the Telco compound. There's something called a landing station. This is where the cable comes in and it sits right in the country, and from there it's distributed to Lone Star. Orange and other internet service providers within the country. Um, so yeah, those that's an estimate of how much it costs Liberia every year to pay. And we had to borrow money, I think, from the World Bank to pay this initial 24 million uh, back in 2010. And we're still paying paying that loan, as a matter of fact. But the government established a cable consortium there in Liberia that manages this this cable as far as the landing point, the the different partners in the, in the access the the cable. Lone Star, Orange, and others, and also make sure that they're paying their dues uh, for access to the to the cable, and they're able to pay as well. So that there's a financial structure there, uh, as far as each country um, uh, be, uh, getting access to to the cable. And whatever that capacity is that is coming into Liberia, what can it do? Let's say, can it run into every household, and we all have internet, or is it too small? No, it's more than more than I think back in 20, 2006 or seven, I did a, a study on how much internet capacity does Liberia need. And the two two gigabits per second is more than enough to, for every single person and and even uh, business in the entire country. But the, the problem we have in Liberia is one of distribution, um, as is the case with a lot of things, you know, electricity distribution, et cetera. So what's what's happening now is that uh, Lone Star bought about 10% of that cable capacity that's in the country. So they said we only want 10% to provide voice and data to our customers. Orange did the same thing. Um, Orange is actually previously was, was a, a, a I think it was Libracell or Comium and then Comium, Cellcom. Um, all those companies, you know, they, they've consolidated now. But between the two main carriers, they only own 20% of that two two gigabit capacity uh, coming to the country. The rest is spread among some other, uh, the telco owns another 20% and the rest is spread. So right now we've got like 50% or 45% of that capacity that's unused because you you know no one wants to buy into it and then uh, invest the financial, uh, the, the financial resources to distribute it either as uh, directly to households. K3 has some of that capacity as well. But, um, you know, you, the capacity is there for the taking. But if you want to invest in that to distribute Internet services directly to households, you have to be willing to not only buy the capacity, but invest in the infrastructure to do that. So that's sort of where the bottleneck is in Liberia. We've got the Internet capacity, but we need investment to, to distribute it uh, equ economic, equ equity, equitably yeah. uh, in, play, in far recent places, you know, like Ganta, you know the the southeast, you know, and, and even Maryland County, and that that's required. That requires a lot of financial uh, resources to do that, and the private sector will have to do that. Let me let me piggyback a little bit on what um, uh, 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 Archie's saying right here. Also, Lionel, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I mentioned your dad name. I'm sorry about that, but um. The, the main consumer, they, if you want to know what kind of system or what kind of thing, as we say in Liberia, can eat it bandwidth, can really eat it up, really absorb a lot, is video. 
video it, it, it requires a whole lot of more bandwidth than than anything else because when you think about a phone call a phone call is not we don't even look at phone phone call traffic it's so small and internet traffic if you notice it's bursty you, you send a signal say i want the information and it's sent back to you they ain't quiet so all those those kind of communications are not very uh, uh taxing on the network the most taxing thing on the network is video so when you want to watch netflix when you want to watch various movies or you want to watch a football game that uh, the world cup that is when you start taxing out the system because you're transmitting bit, um, uh, uh, terabytes and terabytes of data, mm -hmm. and that is what taxes. So when you look at Liberia, okay, how many people got Netflix? You know how many? <laughs> how many people got? So you see, you can watch YouTube. Yeah, and even so the banking and the systems did not did not. We're still doing a lot of monetary, you know, hand to hand uh, and purchasing. So we're not high consumers of data at this point. Most of it is just phone call and a little, little Facebook and thing and like and like that. So, so coming back to the uh, you know, Lana was saying that it was the corporate is an earthquake that shook some things. Yeah. And uh, uh, Ms. V is asking what a tsunami can yeah. do that too. Yeah, it's possible. Anything that anything that of can go all the way to the ocean floor and shake it and cause dam damage is very possible. It could it, it could disrupt the cable on, on the ocean floor. So so uh, just just to add to that answer, I think tsunami is a surface level right. Um, right. atmospheric phenomenon. So typically, you know, if there's an earthquake somewhere far, uh, it will shake the ground and that pushes the the water. You know, just kind of like if you sit in a tub. And the water splashes out. So the tsunami is caused by earthquake far away that pushes water. And that, that tension, that surface tension that builds up stays at the top level. So if you're two miles or three miles under the ocean, you don't see anything. You know, if you look up, you'll see the waves passing. So to answer your question, no, tsunamis typically don't, don't impact cable, don't disrupt cable. Um, uh, what does is earthquakes that are recording almost every hour under the ocean, it's a very the ocean is a very volatile uh, place. Uh, you know, we think of it as a lot of pretty fish and, and ocean life, but it, it's very volatile in terms of tectonic plates that overlap. In terms of volcano, in terms of uh, you know mudslides, and there's a lot going on down there. Hmm. So, so now with these cables, let's say there was earthquake, what happened? Uh, Sierra Leone, Guinea were not impacted. What did it do? So what you what every system, every system that that you make, you try to make it so that it never goes off, it never disrupts, yeah, and that when you that is called a resiliency. Resiliency means it will stay on. I don't care what happened, bomb drop stuff, it will stay on. So you try to build your network in a way that would be resilient. So in other words, like this thing happened the other day one of the cable cut so now instead of the the information going that way you you find another way another uh, uh, route another highway that you can send that information on then it will not be bad but like liberia only, only have one connection and that's the ace some countries have three four connections another thing you can do is to use a wireless collect like satellite but again just like lionel said satellite is expensive so that same two gigabytes two gigabits of uh, uh um data that you are renting it will be 10 times more now because you're sending with satellite so what you do is when you say when you build these are uh, these different different other cap uh, passive uh, roads to send the data, it is called redundancy. In other words, you have to see many, many different ways to send the, mm -hmm. the data. It won't fail, you use the other one. And redundancy costs money because you have to pay for it even if you're not using it. So those other companies like Guinea, like that came back quite quicker, they have better redundancy. They, in other words, they had another way to send the data 
and so they weren't as impacted as we were. Yeah, then let me let me just expand on that. Uh, Dennis, Kenny was definitely impacted, but their impact only lasted roughly 30 minutes to an hour. Um, Sarah Luna as well, um, you know, uh, uh, Ghana, Ghana, South Africa was even impacted yeah. by this uh, outage, and theirs lasted, uh, I think, about five or six hours. Um, some lasted a little longer, like Liberia lasted a day or two. In Liberia, uh, Lone Star was back online much quicker than everybody else. Um, there was no mobile payment was not working. You couldn't top up your data. Um, you couldn't uh, make an international call. You could make local calls within Liberia. But the impact lasted longer. Lone Star is back online 100% right now in Liberia. But Orange is not. I think they're still operating about 30 40% capacity. If you top of your orange um, car phone right now, with, with I'm sorry, top of your phone with orange data, the the, capa the, the, the capacity is very slow um, right now. So you know everybody, there's a lot of variation. But the weird thing is that Nigeria and Ivory Coast has six different fiber optic lines coming into the country. Six, not one. But Ivory Coast has the worst impact. They're still struggling to get on online, and this is because. Um, this is an anomaly, but uh, uh, about six, four of the six cables coming to the country were were impacted by this earthquake, undersea right. earthquake. So right there and then, they you know even though they have more than redundancy, they're still impacted. So the mm -hmm. other anomaly that occurred is that once they realized that you know all of these uh, fiber optic, these these four fiber optic cables were were disrupted. They try to shift traffic to the remaining two, and that overwhelmed the remaining two, because Ivory Coast has five times the population of Liberia. So what's going on now is that they they had spread the capacity out to, to six, and now if they're only using one or two of the cables for, to carry that same load uh, as that um, as the the whole six. So it's causing a lot of bottleneck for them. So the problem is that that they they have plenty of internet coming to the country, but because they use it so much. Mm -hmm. much broader in Liberia, and now the capacity is suddenly reduced to, to a smaller footprint, uh, and they're having to push um, their internet traffic to these, these smaller pipes. So it's causing a disruption. So they, they're working on, on how to fix that. Whereas Liberia, um, you know, the, one of the reasons why Sierra Leone or Guinea may not have been impacted as profoundly as Liberia or Ivory Coast is because it depends on where the earthquake took place. Right. Why not? They just don't know. Uh, it could be somewhere off the coast of Liberia. Like, remember, these cables are laid about five miles off the coast, so it's pretty far out, and they're two, two or three miles deep on the ground. So if if an earthquake happens, say between um, Sierra Leone and say or say Ivory Coast and Liberia, it may not impact Sierra Leone as much because Sierra Leone is still, may still be have have that capacity, um, you know, if, if based on where where the disruption occurred. So, so I wanted to just give an add to that about Ivory Coast, even though they have six, but the four were together. It's like you have a, your spare key, but all your spare key are in the house. In the house. You can get to the house. You can... <laughs> it, it happened during 911, right, where people have backups, but the backups were still in New York. So if you can get to New York, you can use it. So it's yeah. like uh, all these cables, four of them maybe together, so they were all impacted, and you can... You can't yeah, that's that's a, there's a low probability of that happening where you've got four at the same time but the, it's also a, a, a probable because they're all right next to each other underneath right. the ocean so if something happens to one so they may consider spreading it out and to jimmy's point earlier about liberia we've only got one cable coming in but prior to 2010 uh we most of our traffic was by satellite and jim is absolutely right it's very it was very expensive and so when we transitioned to the fiber cable, the cellular companies there in Liberia, they should have considered keeping that uh, satellite capacity as a form of redundancy or backup, but it didn't. They cut it off and they said, okay, we're only going to rely on this undersea fiber. So now you've got a single point of failure in the entire country where if this cable goes down, as you saw on Wednesday and Thursday and some parts of Friday, you can't do mobile payment. You know, you can't do banking transactions in the country. I have a lot of friends who have containers at the port. They couldn't pay their clearance fees, and so their products and, 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 and items were sitting there at the port. You couldn't make an international call. Sandway wasn't working. 
You know, that, that is a cause for protest. You couldn't say nobody could call you. The good thing is that no one could call you to beg for, for money. <laughs> but uh, once it came back online, and one of my friends told me that there was actually a run on the banks in Liberia. Because wow. people realize, I mean, I don't know, maybe out of ignorance, people say, okay, the internet is down, so my money is not safe in the bank, so let me go take it from there and put it under my mattress Yeah. because the internet is down. So this has a, this had a very social and psychological impact on the people of Liberia. Imagine you're sitting there, you can't call people overseas. You know, all you can do is text and call people that are in country, but you can't call none of your, you can't go on Facebook. You can't go on, you know, you, you can't, uh, uh, to, even if you're a commercial establishment, you can't communicate with mm -hmm. suppliers or partners across, uh, even right next door in Sierra Leone, or Ivory Coast or Guinea. So, you know, it was a very traumatic experience for, even though it only lasted 48 hours, it was a very traumatic experience for the Liberian people. And I hope that we learn a lesson from mm -hmm. this uh, incident. You know, there's, there's a there's a Chinese saying that you know, there's an opportunity in every challenge or danger. And I think the opportunity here is one, to create some redundancy in our internet capabilities. And then, you know, number two, explore how we can expand this thing. You know, and, so and that's, that, uh, and that's what we are coming to, what, what, what we can do. Yeah. But, uh, I, I don't know if we've been able to uh, quantify the loss. Ah. Uh. The loss is usually in business and economic activity. That's where most of it. Uh, right. Is. Okay. You, you think we can we can put dollar and cents to it in the days, weeks, and months ahead? I would have to have some some data on the amount of economic activity in and out. But if you look at if you look at um the, the cell phone use, just let, let's because the businesses are separate. Okay, but let's look at cell phone use. Okay, let's say you have about uh, uh, in, in the Morovia era, era, you have maybe a hundred thousand subscribers. Okay, and all of them using the minutes, and I think what I think the cost of one minute, two minute now what is one what two dollars or something like that. So you're talking about two times a hundred thousand. That's two hundred thousand multiplied by that by the forty eight hours. So you're talking about maybe. They lost up a couple of million uh, uh, easily, yeah, yeah, in a couple in, in those two days, maybe a couple, maybe about 20, 20 million dollars. You can me measure something in that range. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right as well. I think you know if you if you want to put numbers to that, you have to look at it from different factors that that were impacted. For example, the um, say for example the remittance factor. All right, over those two days, no one can receive remittances in, into the country. And the average, on the average year, uh, like we were, I guess, about 200 million or 300 million in remittances every year, according to the World Bank. So, you know, that translates to about one or two million per day that was being lost in remittance fees as well as remittance, direct remittance to recipients in, in country. Uh, let's look at the banking sector as well. International transactions cannot be done. Let's look at the taxation sector as well. Taxes cannot be paid electronically. Let's look at mobile payment. Uh, transactions could not be fulfilled. Uh, we, should, we do incur a fee, a commission fee, for every transaction from the, the mobile carriers. This is Lone Star and, uh, and, uh, and, and Orange Money. Uh, let's look at the uh, the cellular rates. Um, you know, the, when Lone Star was down, you couldn't up, you couldn't top up your your phone with data from Lone Star Orange, so they were losing money as well. So if I had to put a number to it. I would say this cost us between, you know, between 30 and 60 million dollars um, over the two days. Um, and you could even double it. I'm sorry, per day. If you double that, it would translate to close to, you know, uh, uh, 60 to 120 million dollars uh, over two days at a cost of like your economy uh, just for two days of, of Internet disruptions. Hmm. Yep. And I'm, I wonder we, we are we are thinking in that direction. I hope we do. But you see, they, this is this comes in the area of what we call mm -hmm. risk risk ma management and how risk tolerant are you? Because if you want to buy, if you want redundancy, if you want, you know, like you spent you spare tire in a car, you know, you don't use your spare tire, okay, and you pay for it. So if they buy uh, uh, um if they buy this redundancy, it's going to be ex operation costs are going to go up. Now it's going to be more expensive. You're going to affect your bottom line. So 
they rather take the risk, especially if the risk is low. They rather take the the risk to let it happen instead of buying redundancy. Now, some people can't afford it, like those big companies in South Africa. South Africa can't afford this sort of thing. South Africa, as you probably know, is the highest consumer of, of data in Africa. Okay, South Africa got oh, tons and tons and tons of things going. So um, they they can't afford uh, it, so they don't mind paying for it because they it's a, uh, they will lose too much if if the internet goes down. And so what they have started to do now, because they realize that these these uh, particular <laughs> networks experience this, they are now seeking a whole different network. They're building two companies. Um, Google is building the the Equinos network, and Facebook is yeah. building to Africa now. Two Africa doesn't even touch. It only touches two places in, in the whole of Africa. Yeah, that's the Equino. You see, it's not even touching anywhere in Africa, as you can see. Just one place there, it's touching in South Africa. That's it. And Nigeria, right? It yeah, Nigeria, Nigeria or Togo way there. Yeah, that's where it's touching. That's the Equino. That's the Google one they building. And the other mm -hmm. one is um, Two Africa. That is what Facebook is um or meta that's what meta is building so they are looking now into investing and in going to these networks that are even safer than the other cables that are running around africa right now just for backup okay two, two years ago or two to three years ago when dr bernard was here he talked about this this uh piano. cable piano. yes indeed yeah. Um, yeah, Dennis Equiano is a project by uh, by Google, and the intention is slightly different from other commercial fiber optic projects like Sat3, uh, West African cable cable system, and uh, and and uh, the, some of the other ones. Equiano is designed to because what Google figured out is that uh, we need to build data centers closer that are closer to our customers, so they they. You know, did, did some research and determined that um, an ideal location would be Nigeria, which has stable electricity, um, you know, uh, inexpensive land, etc. And it has a large population that creates a lot of content. Um, so Equiano is a is a fiber optic cable designed primarily to to carry data center traffic for Google. Uh, it's not really designed for for a country to tap into as a primary, you know, uh, cable infrastructure for transmitting, you know, uh, uh, cost consumer content versus a, a wholesale. So there's a wholesale um, a pipe for Google. So they plan on building. The reason why they're building this way is because they're considering building data centers in Cameroon, in Namibia, in other countries. And once they do that, they'll run the cable into that country and tap into the Equiano network. Um, so that that's sort of the the the, the main uh, a business uh, objective behind this this from this cable network. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, this is between the headlines on Focus on Liberia. We are discussing the internet outage that happened in Africa recently. That's last week. What why did it happen? What was the impact? And how can we avoid a recurrence? What can we do now? so that this doesn't happen again. I, I heard you talking about redundancy, um, resiliency and all that. Let, let's, 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 let's get into that, Jimmy. And, yeah. and how, how much, uh, you know, remember now our, our, our wish bill. <laughs> you, that is, you see all that, you always have to think of operational costs, you know, so if you're going to start building in redundancy, in other words, having enough spares, look at it like a spare. If you're going to have enough spare, I mean, you're not using it, but you're paying for it. And sometimes you're paying the same money that for the one you're using. So like if you have it, like if you might want to look at you have two cars, you got one Mercedes and you got one Jaguar sitting down beside each other. Now, most of the time you use your Mercedes. But the day the Mercedes give him trouble, you use the Jaguar. But you're paying for all two. You pay for the you pay for all two at the same time. 
and if you're a poor man like me, you'll say, oh, no, I, I think I would just keep on uh, using one car. And if it goes, I would have to manage. So that is that is the cost of operation. And that is what the management, that would, this is what I have to calculate. Is it worth investing in it? It's, it, it's, it's a kind of insurance if you look at it. Yeah. And some people don't, some people rather take the risk and, and, and you know, and um, mitigate whatever the risk is. But then some people say, no, I can't afford a, a bank. A bank can't afford to for something like that to happen. You know, security. You know, when it, when the place goes dark like that, um, what could happen with the country's security? You know, anything can happen when the internet down. You don't know who is where. You don't know what's going on. You're not monitoring anymore. And but you know our problem, we got we got plenty of problems, not just internet, we got electrical problems as much. So uh, for us, I think we need to deal with that, the electricity problem first, because it seems to be more uh, uh, more serious. Then we talk about the uh, internet outage second. But I think um, uh, um, the risk management would that's what it would lead me to think. Yeah. Uh, um, well, I think that that's a very good question as far as how do you prevent this from recurring? Um, and I think just from my perspective, there are two measures that have to be undertaking to prevent the Liberian economy from losing, what, uh, $60 million uh, over two days. Uh, we're a small economy. I think our GDP is like, what, uh, 3 or $4 billion? I mean, Ivory Coast is like $80 billion economy. So they probably lost a whole lot more than we do. But the either way, um, the two measures that I would advise taking to prevent this, number one is is, uh, is regulation. All right, people are driven by incentives and disincentives. So right now the regulation doesn't really force the hands of the internet, the internet providers in Liberia or the telcos, Lone Star and Orleans to, to protect consumers from disruption. When AT&T had a disruption year in the U.S. Um, a few months ago, it, it only lasted for about three or four hours. But 911 service was impacted. A lot of people call um, AT&T c- customer service lines. They were inundated with calls from people complaining, even though it was just a three-hour window. They couldn't reach their kids. They couldn't call their, their, you know, their, their office. I mean, it was a mess. So AT&T, by law, was required to compensate these people who incurred some sort of inconvenience from uh, from the disruption. But there are no laws in like Bureau protecting consumers if mobile payment goes down. If they can call, they can get their sand wave money or their you know their data, they can't use their data. There's nothing, I mean there are laws on the book, maybe, but they're not being enforced by you know the regulators that be, like LTA and other regulatory agencies in like Bureau. So I think that's where it starts, is by enforcing regulation. We should give the telcos the incentive to say, okay, you know what? We need to have protect ourselves with some sort of redundancy because if we're disrupted by law we've got to compensate our consumers in the millions who are impacted mm-hmm. by this disruption so you know i think that's the first step is enforcing regulation to protect consumers from disruption because ultimately we got to pay the price yeah, you know, okay, exactly. that's what i was uh, saying in, 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 once second, the operation costs start going up it's going to hit the consumer yeah. pocket somewhere somewhere down the road the second measure that needs to be taken is infrastructure. And that requires a public-private partnership. Uh, public meaning the government has to take the issue to say, okay, you know what, we've only got one fiber cable coming. The cost of ownership is pretty high. So we got to chip in to bring a second cable in to the country. Like this cable, I think it's called Media One Cable that uh, connects to Nigeria. It's a really large capacity cable. We could tap into that as well. The, the, pub, the private sector, could endorse that and come up with some of the funding to bring that second cable. Uh, we could also tap into a lobby to get uh, things like Starlink, which is a uh, Elon Musk base, uh, satellite base um, uh, connectivity. The government could lobby them and say, hey, can you provide uh, Starlink services? Right now, it's only in Nigeria, it's in South Africa, Eastern Africa, Kenya, and uh, I think uh, Malawi and some other countries in Eastern Africa. If we lobby for them to bring it into Liberia, it could be an inter- alternative for consumers. So instead of subscribing to, to Lone Star or, or Orange, you only have two alternatives. The consumer could subscribe to Starlink. It's a little bit pricey, about $120 per month. 
for about the 100 meg or 50 meg uh, per second capacity. Um, but that has to be, the government and the private sector has to lobby stalling to bring that uh, capability into the country. Um, so yeah, I think those two things, regulation combined with infrastructure, bringing a second cable in, bringing alternative satellite base uh, internet services in the country, and, and sort of encouraging innovation because this happens to other countries in the world. South Africa got impacted, but they were only they only lost maybe about twenty five percent of the capacity because they've got six, they've got five cables coming to the country, and a lot of the cables are spread out so that they're one is going the other way, coming from the other way. So the, the, the probability of a disruption within that country is has been minimized to the extent um, as much as it can be. Uh, but, you know, Liberia, we're always sort of behind in things. But uh, I think if we focus on protecting customers and, uh, and improving our infrastructure uh, by bringing another cable and encouraging satellite availability, such as Starlink, I think that would be a good start. From an engineering perspective, is that, that is that like, okay from an engineering perspective you know you we're using fiber optic medium that's one i also want to be able to use a wireless medium too because okay if something happening on the ground at least in the air i might be able to still transmit so it makes it looks like more sense that we use uh, we have a little bit of bandwidth on some a satellite or some wireless system if we have a micro set of microwave systems that we can route traffic on there but um that is another consideration to make as well you know whereas anything anything disrupt the land you can go in the air so but that, again it's just going to cost you a little bit more Thank you. And uh, if you're watching and you want to be part of the conversation, 605-313-6004, the code is 791403-POUND. And this kind of conversation that we are having, you can't have it anywhere else. And I can uh, I can challenge you wherever. It's only on Focus on Library. You can support us by sending stars. If, you, if you're watching on Facebook, send us stars, support us, so that we can keep bringing you information like this. At this time, while we talk more about the uh, what can we do next, I want us to uh, the calls to start coming in. Call, or you can text, not text. You can put your comments, whether you are watching on Facebook, YouTube, uh, or any social media platform. So, some say is uh, what are the challenges ahead when we talk about what can be done right we talk about the redundancy i know money is a factor what else can we look at to see well maybe this can be done this cannot be done this is how long it's going to take what are some of the uh what would be the bottlenecks well the the, the bottleneck in every any initiative is is uh is willingness and commitment uh, it can start from the top or the bottom i think in in the the case of this outage you know it's uh it's shown us that this is a mission critical resource as far as internet connectivity. Um, you know, I think you know we, we talked about the economic impact, the social impact, but there may be some some physical impact to, to people as well, as far as people not being able to get access to you know, emergency care um, or some other some other some other resource that impacts their, their physical abilities. Um, so you know, the, you know, if a country is lacking in in food adequate food supply it will start so it's a critical resource to um to human development and sustainability if a country is lacking in electricity as liberia is, is right now it it, it, it circum it creates a lot of bottlenecks to economic development you can't build factories without electricity um, you can't sustain you know you know any, any sort of uh, economic activity uh, usually in the nighttime without electricity. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that impact. You can't even get investment in the country, adequate investment uh, from private, uh, you know, from, from the private sector without adequate electricity. If a country is lacking in, 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 uh, um, in, in, in you know, in, in, uh, in, in other capabilities um, that are critical to him sustaining human life, uh, water, for example, then you know people take so I think this has made us realize that the internet is life sustaining. 
you know, the access is life sustaining. Um, and yes, we, we, you know, I guess uh, folks in, in Liberia have considered it sort of a, you know, it, as a, a, a resource that's, um, you know, that you, that you, you know, it, 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 it was secondary. You know, if it was there, it kind of, you know, you, you use it, it wasn't there. What this has shown that it is the primary mission critical resource for the entire country. And mm -hmm. we've got to embrace that. We've got to make sure that we protect it um, from, from these kinds of disruptions. Because the next time it happens, it might be far worse. Uh, you may have, um, you know, if you don't have a banking sector operating properly, if you don't have, um, you know, communication sector operating properly, if you don't have, you know, access to, um, to other other services that are internet based, uh, the country can't function. So we've got a lot of problems as it is. Uh, we don't need to keep adding to them. Uh, we need to, to nip this in the park. And, and that's the thing, lineup, because uh, it, it's like uh, the hierarchy of needs, right? Right. So people will be more concerned about, you know, Pusawa than internet. So how do you kind of sell this, that, hey, we need this? Because right now, the most immediate need will be, I want to eat. Pusawa. <laughs> Actually, there's a system that can do this. But you, we need the data. You need data. Food, like you say, is essential. You can't, you can't, you can't live without eating. So that's going to come way on top. But what percentage of your income do you need to use on it? If we stay with uh, the internet and the um, particularly, what is really holding the expansion of internet in our country down is really the stability of electricity. If we had more stable electricity, we would see the internet demands growing ex exponentially. But what is cooling it down? What is what is uh, uh, putting a bottleneck on the development of Liberia is the lack of electricity right now. Uh, if our if our anyone in the government, I would focus all attention uh, uh, on electricity. I heard the the the, um, the hearing today. And I know that the Senate, they need, in, they need their own committee that can assess these technological issues because they, wouldn't, they don't have the capacity to know everything about every industry. So you have to have um, select groups that can focus on this and give you and feed you answers, feed you questions, so that when these guys come, you interviewing them, they were not going to simply uh, uh, steamroll you and tell you things that that are not completely true for instance the 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 hearing today they could not explain the reason for the loss why are you losing if you see you can't, it can't all be theft where is are these losses coming from and so and until we get a hold on some things like that um it will con it will persist and the other thing we do we were too isolated in, in Africa. We, if we pool our resources, for instance, if Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Liberia say, you know what, we both need extra capacity, right? Redundant capacity. So when things go out, I tell you what, why don't we join together and pay for this uh, uh, extra capacity? Then it will be cheaper on all of us. And it's mind you, it's just standby. So it, it makes it cheaper now for you to have good bit of, uh, a redundancy and not being as as expensive so that it keeps your your operational costs down so more collaboration we need better collaboration so that it can bring the cost of things down for us that's definitely one way we can go and, and lana you were talking about starling there's a j cooper pronounced said i believe that a librarian representative or senator said on air that he has starling already yeah the one of the things about starling is that even though it is, it's geocentric, meaning that um, you have to be, I mean, at least their marketing says that you have to be in a specific country like Nigeria or the US or parts of Europe to get access to the service. But the fact is that some people are bypassing this, um, that, uh, that, pro that process. And if you're able to buy the Starlink equipment, which is quite expensive, at the low end, it costs about $600 for the satellite equipment uh, the high end, it costs several thousand dollars. If you're able to buy the equipment and bring it to Liberia, there's a possibility that it will still work. But it, the satellite will see you as not being in Liberia, but being in some other country where this equipment originated. So essentially, you have to hack into the 
installing infrastructure um, mm. in to you to to access that internet service in the country where it's not explicitly being offered. So um, yeah, that that's a uh, that's likely why the senator has it, how he has it in Liberia. It's been hacked. The equipment has been uh, pr purchased from another country, and I think the Russians did this uh, with uh, to use it in, in Serbia. I'm sorry, not in Serbia, in, in Ukraine as part of the military operation because they don't have access to it, but they bought the equipment from third parties and, and Jerry and rigged it so that they could access the, the Starlink infrastructure. Yeah, quickly before we get to our callers, Jimmy, you, you, you wanted to uh, talk a little bit about these two? Yeah, so let's, let's, I wanted to show. Here. Yeah, that 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 shows all the different uh, uh, undersea cables lying through all over the world. As you can see, Africa are there uh, on the right, and then you see North America and South America, and above there you see Europe. You can see that the the between Europe and uh, 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 America, you can see a density of uh, several cable lines between them. But you know, if you notice, you don't see anything between Af Africa and America. And then between Asia and America, you see that uh, uh, those high uh, getting thick. They, it's getting thick like that because the number of, uh, of cable lines between them are many. As you know, China is the second largest uh, economy and America is the largest. So they do a lot of trade extensively. And then you got Japan right there. So that is why you see all that uh, density. But if you look at Africa, it's the least, you know, of and all Africa. those places and, and Africa to South America, there's nothing there. Yeah, there's, there's not. I don't know if that's a little some, yeah, there doesn't <laughs> appear to be anything. There. So maybe again, the internet cable between the <laughs> again, what is going to drive the, the, the more cables being connected to Africa is economic activity, more internet yeah. activity. And uh, until we, I like I said, let's 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 solve the electricity problem. Then this industry, this is this is what's holding this industry back. We could be doing taking phone calls in Liberia, be doing answering uh, right. uh, uh, tech, a, technical I'll, problems. I'll, I'll do a lot of issues, but until until we resolve the and that is the in fact there's a market right now in Liberia for what we call POS a point of sale systems. Right now everybody's taking money when. How many times have you spent money in this country? Aren't you using all most of your transactions are electronic? Most of the world has gone to electronic transactions. Uh, and, 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 and Jimmy, you, you wanted to also talk about fiber optic? Yeah, so that is the cable. That's what they look like. You can see the steel mesh, the gray looking thing. That's the steel mesh around them to protect them. Okay. It has a, a polylithium uh, covering on the outside, actually black. Then you can see the white is um, the white part is called a dielectric core that keeps the the the, the conductor uh, uh, um, uh, shielded. Okay, and then they put they put wire from power in there because sometimes they need to transmit power. If to remember, I told you you have to regenerate the signal every single every right. single few feet. So. It carries a, a little bit of electricity on it just to to for those repeaters. And then finally, on top there, you see the, the actual glass fiber. Like I told you, one fiber is just like, just look at a strand of hair. It's the same as a strand of hair, but it's glass. And in the middle of it, it's got a, it, it's got a hole, you know, and, and that is what's used to send um, the light through. Thank you. As you talk, one of our regular say, is this Mr. Isma's specialty of practice because they see you are on. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's this is what I did for about 20, 20 years with with I don't know if I should call it the company name, but one of the big companies here. <laughs> right. And Lionel, I want to bring to your attention there's an article in the Daily Observer or the Librarian Observer. Sometimes you say Daily Observer, it reveals your age, right? The <laughs> Librarian Observer online. <laughs> And, and this this guy, and I want to show that because these are some of the things that our people are reading. Even though I don't I don't have enough uh, knowledge, but I, I read this and I, I I just thought he was bluffing, right? He said, "Why last week internet blackout is suspicious occurrence," and he tried to 
kind of talk about some conspiracy. I don't know whether he wrote that Dr. Donna Agimunu from Ghana and he wrote this. You know, I shared with you guys as we're preparing for the show, just so that you could talk a little bit about this because he is looking at, you know, cyber attack and all kinds of foolishness. Well, well, I tell you, Joe, I don't know about the conspiracy theory, but it I sure it was an eye opener for everybody. In other words, if if you want to shut down Africa, if you want to shut down a government, how easy is that to do? You know, what we what we have experienced besides just this, it, sometimes it wouldn't be a cut cable if we call what we call a DOS attack. A DOS attack is what you know, a, a denial of service. Where you shut down the computers, the computer networks in the whole country, that can be done. That can be done by sending having uh, uh, these bots, these robots, just maximize the data on on all the bandwidth on the system until nobody else can send any information. And what will happen to the country? So it ha it has to be a security. Right, but that's not what he was saying. Though he was not saying, "Hey, this could be an eye opener to uh, prevent things from because it could be an attack." He was kind of speculating that. Hey, why are these countries targeted like Ghana? Yeah, with, with politics, I yeah, think some people are having elections. Yeah, but yeah, but he, he was, what, he why is also saying thank God you didn't say that which <laughs> all, 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 all the world coming to an end. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it probably is which you know the, the whole the way the internet works is it's almost um comparable to witchcraft if you look at it. But I read the article and thanks for sharing, Dennis. Um, you know, one, one thing to note is that in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Yeah. So in this case, you know, there are a lot of folks out there who would spread the uh, conspiracy theories to take advantage of certain uh, confusion about a situation. In this case, many people didn't know what was going on. I mean, if you're a regular consumer of Internet services in Liberia, you pay, you buy a $20 data card, you know, you use your service to, to request same way or to, to search Facebook, um, you don't really know how the internet works. So when it goes down, you know, you're susceptible to a lot of um, misinformation, if you put it. And, you know, we've seen a lot of that lately. So, you know, in that case, a lot of it was politically driven. And I think what he was alluding to is that um, why did the internet go off in these 13 African countries? Why didn't it go off in Europe or Asia, or India? And he was saying that this may have been deliberate to disrupt the economic activity in, in these African countries because of some, you know, uh, neocolonialism conspiracy against these countries, which is absolutely false and misleading. Um, the Internet, this was a technical issue. This was an issue of technology being disrupted by a natural phenomena, which is an earthquake, not someone swimming three miles under the ocean five miles off the coast to cutting a cable, maybe using a machete or some, I don't know how they're going to do that. The water pressure under there alone is enough to kill you within a couple of hundred feet under the ocean. So they would have to wear very expensive gear. Uh, maybe it was a country that said, okay, you know, we're going to push a button. Uh, maybe this is one of the, uh, what is it called? The, these, uh, the, this international organization that runs the entire world. Uh, they push a button and, but you see how, how um how how you know how how ridiculous all that sounds and I think that's what was coming through in the article was that okay let's point the finger at somebody um you know other than the real person responsible for this so I think you know as, as consumers we have to be aware of of misinformation uh, whenever there's some there's some confusion or controversy going on you have to look for the facts and I, that's why I'm glad Dennis brought us to this forum to you know us being you know experienced professionals in the technology sector illuminati that's what it's called oh, experience yeah. uh, right. in this in this sector to um to, to to tell the masses exactly what happened um and it was not somebody illuminati pushing a button or somebody swimming three miles under the ocean to cut the cable uh with you know with, with, a, with a machete or something so it was simply a natural phenomenon that could have happened any day any time Right. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. This is, this is good stuff. And Jimmy, you kept mentioning electricity. Guess who's coming to focus on Labrador to talk about electricity? 
when we talk about electricity in Liberia, who's the guru? Our own Chris, Chris Neal. Correct. <laughs> I talked so, to Chris today. I talked to him just today about that thing. Yeah. So he's going to come to talk about, you know, I, I always told him, you know, I was I was in Moravia College when he came mm -hmm. from America with the degree and he was given that job, right? And Straight away. Man, nah, <laughs> I went to university majoring in electrical engineering because of him. He was like, <laughs> yes, I want to be like that guy. So yeah. he's coming to you yeah. uh, Focus on labor so we can talk about electricity. Well, that would be good. That would be good. Yeah, that, that's that's happening very soon. We we working on that. It's already accepted. All right, gentlemen. But thank you so much for for the time. I mean, the the education that we provide here at uh, Focus on Liberia. That's one thing that keeps me going. That uh, even if we don't make any impact with other things, we sure can provide the education that our people need. And I really thank you, professionals, for coming and uh, kind of sharing your knowledge. That's, and the, that's a Facebook it. project. Yeah. yeah. That's so it. I to just share that too. Mm -hmm. So at, at this time, we, uh, we're we going to conclude. And uh, let's, let's, let's wrap it up, Jimmy. Yeah. So um, we, we, we kind of got slow off the mark, but we've been catching up and, and mobile technology really helped expand the internet into Africa with the, with the commission of um, cell sites and the amount of traffic it can hold. That's how we'll, um, what speed, sped things up. But we need to, to get to be able to support more data. We would need more fiber optics placed inland not just around the coast like you see there. We need to expand the networks inland and put more uh, what we call base stations all around so that um, 4G can carry a lot of data now. From, so, from so. Cape Mount to Cape Palmas. Yes, yes, that's what we need. And, and and it will open all kinds of opportunities for young Liberians to, to, to you know, develop the skills that they can take advantage of the industry. It's, 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 it's a win-win situation. Dr. Bernard. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, first again, thanks again, Dennis, for inviting us here. And Jimmy, it's always good to see you, my man. But, uh, you know, in, in, in retrospect, I want to say that, uh, you know, like Liberia, uh, we, we got to realize that, um, you know, our economy is dependent on, on several things. You know, Jimmy alluded to electricity availability being critical to economic development in the country. And that's absolutely right. So we need to focus on, because a lot of these technology that we depend on so much for mobile payment, et cetera, charging our phones, um, you know, uh, heating, heat, cooling our homes, um, even, you know, uh, 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 you know, streaming, streaming, streaming media is it, dependent on electricity. So we got to get that infrastructure right. The second thing to realize is that um, we got to, we got to, you know, start transforming our economy from, you know, sort of a art, artisanal uh, farming uh, economy to an information age economy. Uh, the rest of the world is, is moving forward. And you got a country like Vietnam that was trapped in post-war war dilemma, full of mines, you know, just 30 years ago. Now they're one of the, the darlings of the of Asia with, you know, the GDP, the economic is, is blooming to the tune of eight or 10% annually as far as growth. Um, you know, they, they're close to Nigeria now in terms of the, the size of the economy. A lot of factories, they solved their problems, but we haven't. Um, you look yeah. at a country like India uh, a few years ago, I mean, they've got the largest population in the world. And what they did consciously was said, okay, we're going to transform, we're going to leverage technology and internet capacity to grow our economy. So they, when the internet was still in its infancy, they bought up a lot of internet capacity especially this undersea fiber cable when it was still in its infancy back in the 90s. The first cables were running to India. A lot of people don't, don't, don't realize that. It was all, all, all the vision of their leader that said, you know what, this is a trend that we're going to tap into because we have a large population and we want to leverage that as a resource. So the second thing that they did was once they got a lot of this internet capacity, they started emphasizing um, technology education right. within the education system. So their aim to their aim was to develop the best technical folks in the world, and that's exactly started with establishing the best schools, technology schools in the room. 
like uh, the Jiru Technology Account, JIT, uh, Jiru uh, Information Technology Institute there, and others. So these things were deliberate. So they brought in, they, you know, they sorted out the electric, electricity issues. I mean, they still have issues here and there. Um, you know, so we, one of the ways we can sort out is through solar energy as well. But that's a whole nother discussion. But we got to resolve that. We got to yeah. tap into um, our the information is and the potential that it offers for giving people jobs and opportunities and, and through training as well. And we got to we got to we got to leverage that like India has done, whereas now India has the the best mobile pay payment system in the entire world. Some of the fastest Internet. Microsoft, uh, most of the Microsoft products that you use are built in India um, because, you know, they, they, they train their people to leverage that capacity. A lot of call centers are based in India. I think someone someone mentioned that earlier because they have the internet capacity. So we got to realize the same way cellular services, when they were introduced back in the early 19, 1990s to like Bureau of Laos and Leapfrog, our landlines and transition to cell phones, which are much more portable and reliable. Remember back in the days you couldn't, if you wanted to get a landline, you had to wait like two or three years. Yep. So cell phones eliminated all that. So we can go to a point where if somebody graduates from LU or one of our universities, their priority, they should be well-trained in technology skills to and have the, the resources and capabilities to join a call center, to be a software engineer, to be a telecom engineer, to do something related to technology instead of, you know, uh, texting their friends in the U.S. to, to ask for, for small money. But, you know, so, yeah, so that's my, my, my message. And also, you know, like I said earlier, there's an opportunity in every, every difficult situation. Right. Uh, we can learn from this. Uh, we can, you know, improve a lot of our, our telecom infrastructure um, or Internet infrastructure because of this. And we can also leverage this to, to improve our overall economy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate your time. I want to thank our viewers for watching. Even those who watch later, share the show. And uh, you got our Meyer there. Mansfield. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> what he say? Anybody? Uh, there you go. <laughs> Everybody look. But Mario, how you look? See, you're looking young, my man. Well, thank, thank, thank you so much, guys. Uh, really, what, what we're doing at FOL, we are building a library. Even uh, it's a book that we're writing. I always tell my guys that we're writing a book. If it is not bestseller today, it's going to be in a very not too distant future. We want to close now and uh, play our song that says we are all Liberians. Have a good night. Before we go, I just want to give a plug for my book. Yeah, please. Uh, Broken Coming. Um, it's on Amazon.com. Get it. It talks a lot about the internet, the history of internet in Liberia. What's the title of the book? book? Broadband Coming. Broadband Coming. Broadband coming. So Amazon the account. You see the map of Liberia on there? It tells you everything you know you need to know about telecom and internet. And also this fiber optic cable project, how we got to Liberia, the history of it. Thank you. Right. Just plot, then, plot. Then use one minute to talk a little bit about your background. Why you think we should read your book? <laughs> um, <laughs> you put me on the spot. Anyway, for the viewers out there, I'm a technology executive. I work for the, the U.S. government in the private sector for the past 20 years or so. Um, I'm also, um, I have a doctorate in, in management, technology management as well. I'm also the author of several books, five books. Uh, you can find them all on Amazon, just just type my name. Um, some of it is fiction, some of it is nonfiction. Um, you know, writing is one of my passions as well, besides, uh, besides technology. I'm also an entrepreneur, um, you know, got a lot of pots in the fire in Liberia as well as here in the U.S. And that's sort of me in a, in a nutshell. Uh, but as far as uh, uh, technology, you know, I, uh, you know, I try to bring quality whenever I'm on the show and insight so our viewers can get to thinking about, you know, how can we make this better? Yeah. But uh, again, if you want to find my book, just go on on uh, Amazon. Uh, this is one of five books I've written. And you'll find each one of them there um, on, that, uh, on that forum. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And Jimmy, I want you to give you that opportunity also because when you were talking, somebody asked, hey, let Jimmy eat technology. So let's uh, a little bit about you, Jimmy. Yeah, I just, okay, I've been in technology and management for the past 25 years. Um, electricity, telecommunications, uh, information systems, 
and, and, and I got a couple of master's degrees and from some some of the top universities here just to make me including John me, Hopkins said from yeah from Johns Hopkins from <laughs> Stevens Institute of the Technology and um uh, just to prepare uh, prepare me to help so we can go back home you know that's that's where we all want to develop right. you know, back home and 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 even it's not for money because I'm at a point now it's there's no money I need. I only want to see the, the sector moving. And I know this is one of the things we have to get our power, to, to, even water. If we don't fix that power issue in Liberia, we will not go anywhere. Okay, even if drink. water can be pumped without power. Right. You know? So, so we can get water and sewer, we can get wash, we can get re rural renewable. And I don't know where all this stuff comes from. We got nothing. But but thank you, gentlemen. I really, really appreciate your time. At this time right. now, we're going to close with our song that says, We are all Liberians. Have a good night and God bless you. We are all